from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. started, it's time for Hot Topics. I hope you had a nice weekend. Mine was wonderful, I must say. Um, Mike came. And, and um, he took me for Passover um, lunch. Uh, yeah. And then um, we went for dinner at this place called Lavo here in the city. And I mean, my refrigerator is so full of those plastic containers with all the good food. And I tried my best not to eat a lot. He makes. <laughs> he makes me, he makes me, he makes me smile so much. I tried my, and we talk, 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 talk. So I'm trying to eat at the same time. And I ended up just saying, let me box everything up. And I realized I was a little nervous, you know, like, cause he's back. And I broke out in strawberry hives. Aww. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we put food on our eyes. Yeah. And then um, we went to Dr. Oz and his wife Lisa's for, for uh, dinner. Wow. And there was nobody there but the four of us. It was so intimate and so nice, like adult conversation about medicine and crime and people and kids and stuff like that. Lisa did the cooking, a delicious chicken in the oven. As soon as I walked in, I'm like, wow. yeah. Wow. It was, yeah, mm-hmm. That looks mm -hmm. delicious. I'm so hungry right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was my weekend. Um, my friend Lays stopped over yesterday. You know, he manages MOP. And he just stopped over to say hi, to check on me. You know, you know, I, you know I hate a wellness check. I'm fine, okay? <laughs> I had company all weekend. What do you want? Yeah. You know? So, um, but he came over and then he left to go have a business meeting with a guy named Gus Johnson. Do you know who that is? No. He's, um, I don't know, some guy. Gus Johnson. I didn't really look. He asked me, do you want to come? I'm going for lunch. I said, no, I don't want to sit in on your business. I, I'm nosing on TV, not really by nature. <laughs> and so, so I said, where are you going to go? He said, I don't know. I said, well, you know, why don't you get, go get fried fish? It, it's Sunday. Why don't you go get fried fish, collard greens, the usual. So I called up Melba and then they went over there and then he got me you know, food to go and came back and left it at the front desk. And they called me up, they're like, you've got food. I'm like, not more food. <laughs> and I talked to Fat Joe briefly on the phone. I had to ask, hi Joe. I, I had to ask about Aunt Janet and she's still with us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fight, fight, fight. And then I was minding my own business. Honestly, it was the last 15 minutes of the Salt and Pepper movie on Lifetime, and I see the teaser for Wendy Williams' movie next. I said, like, what? Yeah. Did so you watch I watched. Movie? I, I wa <laughs> yeah. I mean, I fell asleep on the last half hour. Yeah. But I know how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I did watch the Tina Turner documentary once I went up to channel um, 538. Like way up there, but you know what? That was so good. And I, 
you know, she's lived such a, well, she's living a good life now, but it came from such tragedy. And I'm still not over Aretha Franklin movie. And so I said, I'm not doing that anymore, pardon me. I'm not doing that anymore, like it's too sad. And it was windy. Oh my gosh, it, and my building sways a little bit. And the chandeliers, yeah, like a haunted house. <laughs> but that movie was really good, yeah. By the way, I'm doing an after show today with um, Jewelry Will, so he can explain what a lot of people don't like, my flower ring. What like like what happened, it's so distracting. Well, so are these, okay? Look, with the cutouts, so you can see skin. Yes, oh, wow. welcome to church. Hi, Reverend. I'm Wendy, the new girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, Little Nas X releases his uh, Satan shoes today. This is just awful. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, and I love sneakers. I, I love to collect them. My son loves them. You know, he collects them. And, you know, the more rare, the better. But there's a drop of blood, like, in the bottom area. And then inside, there's uh, something that makes your feet red. You know, so I don't know whether it washes off or whether it's just a temporary thing. But, um, and there's a bronze pentagram, you know, which is satanic, uh, right here on the front. And there's an inverted cross. Yeah, it's, it's all too much. I, I mean, it, it's just all too much, you know. Um, I don't know about you, but I wasn't raised to, you know, mess with the devil. Like, devil, get out. Bye, devil, not today. And I don't go to church, but I do believe in God, you know, in heaven. And, you know, that, I also believe in hell, but I believe in heaven. So Nike released a statement saying that they are not involved. They, don't, they know nothing about that. They didn't design that shoe. This is Little Nas X. And, they, um, and they're called, um, what are these called again? Um, um, I don't remember. Satan um, shoes? They're like, I just call them the Satan shoes. Well, he, he has 666, the number of the devil, um, to sell. And so, from what I understand, they're already sold out. Like, this just all happened at midnight. And you wake up this morning, you're like, are you getting them, Sus? Absolutely not. I will not be wearing those ever. Not for shoe cam, not for life, not for anything. <laughs> just something about it. I think it, 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 it's another bad mark on entertainment because now people think, you know, to become really successful, you have to sell your soul to the devil and do all kinds of weird stuff. And I was never a fan of Old Town Road, you know, but, but I like little Nas X, you know, a young man who, you know, just made it happen real quick. Now I don't even know what to do. do I, can I wear my uh, little Nas X gift that he gave me, my Wrangler panty shorts? Uh, <laughs> Okay. I, what? What? I was about to go tell jokes. I was on tour there. Yeah. All kinds of outfits and stuff. Anyway, the shoe release is at the same time as his video, which is just as bad as the shoe. It takes place in hell. He gets seduced by Satan. Oh, just a oh, little Nas X. What are we gonna do with you? Mm. I already talked to my son. No, he's not in. No. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So Sharon Osbourne quit or got fired or something. She's not gonna be at the talk anymore. Yeah. CBS said that uh, her behavior towards her co-host didn't align with the virtual, uh, with the values, excuse me, and respectful workplace. And a lot of the girls, including um, Leah Remini, who was fired, and you know, people, including Julie Chen, when she was there, you know, they said that Sharon would say disparaging things about the Asian community to her, and just she just has no filter. And so I'm glad she quit. Of course, Piers Morgan thinks it's atrocious that she's still not there. And, um, but that's the way it is. And the whole show is still on hiatus. They think that this is gonna blow over when really, I don't know about you, I'm not a talk 
watch her. Yeah. Cause here in New York, Oz comes on at the same time. And so that, that's what I watch. Um, and uh, and um, Family Court. Uh-huh, you love I, Family Court. I do, yes I do. <laughs> yes I do, court is in session. <laughs> Uh, so Sharon allegedly is planning on suing CBS for damages. And you know what? She's probably going for millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, which is gonna mess up the money for the girls who are still left there to get raises. Quite frankly, I do believe that they don't need a replacement. You know, just leave the four girls there. They're smart in their own way. They're entertaining, according to people who watch, they're entertaining to watch, but I do have an idea for who I think would be really good there. Don't throw tomatoes. My friend, Chris Jenner. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, hi, hi, Chris. We talked on the phone this weekend, like two giggling schoolgirls about everything, you know, family and life and stuff like that. And partially through the conversation, I said, Chris, it, it's just my opinion, but you know what? You'd be really good at the talk. You know, she's smart, she's a name, she's got this family, you know, keep all the other girls there, but Chris would be really good at the talk. And then she says, Wendy, I can't, I have so many jobs and I'm always working and now it's time for me to take time for myself. You know, it happens after a particular age, you take time for yourself. And so she said, but she was flattered that I said that. And I remember she had the talk show and the talk show didn't get picked up, but that was before we were friends. So I was happy it didn't get picked up. <laughs> How dare you try to make talk look so easy, you know? And she's laughing and I'm laughing. We laughed, we cried, and then we said goodbye. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, the talk will continue to air, repeats until April 15th. Tax day, when, when, every, when everybody's stressed out and they're looking for a reason to dislike someone. So, so I don't think that that's a good day for them to come back. Maybe they should wait until after tax day or something. You know, too many, too many distract. <gasps> Clap if you have a storage unit. Well, Beyonce's storage unit was broken into. Yeah. She's got three units in LA and they were hit twice earlier this month. Wow. And reportedly they stole, you know, a little over a million dollars in handbags, dresses and toys. But my thought is that if you break into a Beyonce storage unit, you're, you're supposed to have like $10 million of stuff, you know, like a million dollars. I mean, that's a lot of money, but not for Beyonce. I was even more shocked that she even has a storage unit, <laughs> you know? Because even if she's not the one who ever goes there, it's her workers going there. And so now they secretly low key how they can get paid. I'm not accusing all your workers. All I'm doing is looking at them with a squinty eye. This sounds like an inside job. Yeah. Just saying. Yes. Just, just saying. And the thieves are still on the loose. I never trusted a storage unit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're too, I've never had one in my entire life, always because I'm suspicious of the people who work there. You know, while I go in there schlepping, is that Wendy with the big mouth? What's she bringing in here? Oh, okay. All right, did she leave? All right, get the extra key, let's go. Or something, or something. If you need a storage unit, just stop buying stuff. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? You know, when my mother and father, when they moved um, from Florida or from Jersey to Florida permanently, you know, we had the, uh, a home that I grew up in in Ocean Township in the Wayside section, and they had nice stuff. I didn't want any of that. Cause I'm like, I'm moving along with my life, you know, but I do have little tiny remembrances of little tiny stuff that matter to me more than a couch with claw feet, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and dishes and stuff. Well, there's sad news in the boxing community, and I'm very, very sad about this. The Tyson Holyfield fight is off again. Oh. Yeah. First, we told you it was off. Then Mike issued a statement, no, it's on. And now his own team says that Mike misspoke and the fight is not happening. 
I mean, because I, I was planning on, it's gonna be, it was gonna be in Miami, and I was planning on going. Yeah. And now if it gets called back on, I'm, now I don't wanna go because how do I know that I, I'm knocking on the door? Where's the fight? Oh, they just canceled it an hour ago. Like all of a sudden you're unreliable entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Secretly, it is for the best, though. Mike doesn't need to be punched one time in the head. Not even for $25 million. And Evander Holyfield, even though he's really tall and, you know, a you know, nice-looking man and everything, he also doesn't need to be punched one time in the head. I was talking to Lays about the fight, you know, when he came over, and we both agreed, hands down, that if they fought, that Tyson would definitely win. Like, hands down. No, a lot of people thought it would be, like, him, James. You said Holyfield. Yeah. That's right. He won the last time. But he got his ears bitten. He won that one. <laughs> well, you're only saying that because you're, you're tall, so you, you, you've got this whole thing with... More reach. <laughs> Don't I know it. It's, yeah, it's nice to be tall. So um, TV One has this show called Uncensored. And last night, um, the love and hip hop producer friend to the show, Mona Scott Young was on. And Mo that's a good outfit. Yeah. yeah. I like her. For, for some reason, when you squint, don't you kind of see Queen Latifah? Just, okay, kind of. Um, so she said that she's being vilified for doing the same, job, the same job that her white counterparts do. Take a look, don't forget the squint. What is sometimes infuriating is that my counterparts, my white male counterparts, my white female counterparts, aren't held to the same scrutiny, the same um, criticisms that I'm held to because I am a black woman. And nobody is hanging any of those producers out to dry or saying that they are bringing down their culture for providing the very same opportunities to the cast members of those shows. I mean, I can relate. You know, it doesn't help that she's black and that you got black people and minority people, you know, fighting on those shows. And we don't really wanna see those fights, but the fights are what we were there for. I know that sounds very juvenile, but I've got my juvenile ways, <laughs> you know? But um, I understand exactly what she's saying. Like, even here, talking to you, do you know how many people scream to me? You know, why don't you use your platform for something other than gossiping and that stupid Ask Wendy? You don't even know about yourself. You're not even an official therapist talking about Ask Wendy. But this is what I do. Yeah. This is what I do. If I sat here all day and talked about, you know, the, the coronavirus and politics and all that other kind of stuff, you would quickly change the channel. You know, can't come out in just some plain old clothes and a stupid wig as opposed to a good one. You, you, would, you would change the channel. That's why we love you. Oh, Norman. <laughs> and Norman only says that because he works at the show and he doesn't want to get fired. No. That's what they say. No, I would say that if I was at home with the remote watching this, I would watch this show. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So would I. Yeah. So would I. Yeah. TV One plays the show at midnight. Love so, that. So now we're on three times a day. Yes. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> um, so Prince William was named the world's sexiest bald man. <laughs> now, he's not a bad looking man, but, but he's not sexy to me. There's nothing about him that's sexy. You know, when you say somebody's sexy, everything has to come together, you know, how they own who they are, how they walk, you know, how they, how they treat you and other people. You know, you've got to get, be the master of your domain. Shout out to the Seinfeld fans. You know. You've got to be the master of your domain. And you don't even have to be really good looking. You know, to me, well, as I've gotten older, 
Sex appeal is something totally different than what it was when I was 18 or 25, you know? So people are outraged. Now, yeah, people are outraged. Um, they like people like Shamar Moore and Boris Kojo. Say, shout out to you boys. Look, I'm tired of you being the sexiest. We already know you're good looking. Can you give somebody else another chance, another sexy bald man or something? You know, they also like, um, or I do, I like Bruce Willis. Yeah, he, he's the master of his domain, definitely. Um, I'm not into John Travolta like that at all. And then they throw up the usual sexy men, Vin Diesel and Dwayne The Rock. But you know what? Go sit over there with Boris and Shamar. Your beauty is celebrated too much. Can you give other people a chance? And so Dwayne joked that Larry David deserved to win. I said, Now, I do find him sexy, you know what I mean? I like the way he looks, I like his confidence, I like his talent, you know what I mean? I do. Did you go to church and get a palm? Clap if you did. Yeah. That's the one thing that I didn't do. Like, you know, you at least just go like to St. Patrick's Cathedral or something like that. But it was such a busy weekend. A Sunday, I just sat down. God understood. Wendy, relax. You've got a big job to do tomorrow. <laughs> and we've got more great show for everybody. Up next, the inside scoop on Britney Spears conservatorship. So grab a snack and come on back. Inside Scoop, and here with the dish is senior correspondent at Variety, our friend Elizabeth Wagmeister. Hey, Wags. How are you doing? Hi, Wendy. So good to see you. You too. You look great, by the way. You yeah. always look great, Wendy. Yeah, but I got, I got a team. But thank you. So uh, I'm glad you're here to talk about Britney Spears. I think the father is, is right to be in charge of the money. Okay, so Wendy, you obviously have an opinion that I think a lot of the Free Britney fans do not agree with, but that's why I need to give you the inside scoop on what's going on, the latest with the Free Britney movement and her conservatorship. So what just happened, Wendy, is that after almost 13 years of her father, Jamie Spears, being in charge of her conservatorship, Britney Spears' attorney has filed a petition to have her father removed as her conservator. Now, this is not the first time that we have heard this. You may remember, Wendy, that back in November, a judge actually denied Britney's request to have her father suspended as the conservator of her, conservator her of her estate. But now, also more recently, last month, the judge also denied Britney's father's request to be the sole conservator. So that was seen actually as a small win for Britney. Mm -hmm. And I do want to remind you that her lawyer in a legal letter had said that Britney is afraid of her father and that she refuses to perform until he has removed from her conservatorship. That's obviously taking a huge stance, a big stance. Yeah. And everybody wants Britney to perform again. They want her to be healthy, but they want to see new music. They want her to perform. Well, just to bring people up to speed in case, because it's very confusing. So what happened is that in 2007, Britney Spears, that's when she had her very public breakdown. We all remember that. Mm -hmm. And then in 2008, her father requested to have her under a conservatorship. That is how he became her conservator. So he has been in charge of this since 2008. It's been almost 13 years. Well, in 2019, he took a brief hiatus because of his own medical issues. And at that time, a person of the name of Jody Montgomery stepped in to be the temporary conservator. Well, now Jody Montgomery is the individual that Britney's lawyer is requesting becomes the sole conservator to have her father removed. So where are we right now? I mean, cause I thought that Jamie didn't mind somebody helping her with her career and Jamie would just sit and look at the money. 
So that is a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. It's very confusing, but I have done a lot of interviews on this matter. And there's actually two different parts of Britney's conservatorship, Wendy. There is the conservatorship of a person, which basically means taking care of all of their personal matters, their medical issues. And then there is the conservator of the estate, which means managing the money. Mm -hmm. What Britney is requesting is only to have Jody Montgomery become the sole conservator of her person, meaning managing her medical needs, managing all of her personal issues. And the legal letter actually doesn't even mention what would be done with the estate. So Jamie would still be in charge of her finances. And that is what a lot of people are really kind of raising their eyebrows at because there are people who are saying, is Jamie Spears, Britney's father, just doing this to make money? Because you have to remember, Brit or you have to remember, I just almost called you Britney, Wendy. You have to remember, Wendy, that when you are the conservator, that's a job. You get money. And I've interviewed people who say that he could be making as much as 1% to 2% of Britney's assets. And, of course, Britney Spears is a huge pop star but, and has a huge net worth of tens of millions of dollars. But, but, you know, keeping track of all that money, he should be paid. Like, he works for her. And I like the Jody woman being there. And maybe since Britney likes her, maybe she can help Britney get back to being well. Because I don't feel like Britney's ready to do anything but have several seats and get well. Yeah. Get well. <laughs> and she's still young. She's got a career. Anyway, let's talk about the next story. Um, that relationship guru person was giving relationship I advice on TV while running around on his wife. Yeah, so Wendy, I have to be honest, I did not know who this was until I was coming on your show, and now I am obsessed with this story. So the relationship guru, his name is Derek Jackson. Yeah, he has over 1.3 million followers on Instagram, so he's a really big deal, and he preaches healing and healthy relationships to all of his millions See? followers. Well, now, Wendy, guess what? <laughs> he got caught in his own mess. Fans uncovered that he was having multiple affairs, and now he actually came forward and admitted to all these affairs in a video with his wife, and we have a clip, so let's Okay, take okay. A lot has been said already about what was the cause and all that other stuff. Some of it is true, some of it is completely false. But the truth is, and I'm saying it here now, is that Derek Jackson was involved with other women outside the marriage. And by involved, I want to be clear, I'm not talking about just casually kicking it, maybe a lunch or something like that. I'm talking about as serious as sex, um, to sexual flirtation and, and meeting up and that kind of thing. So have any of the mistresses come out? They have. And first of all, Wendy, Ooh. that video, is that not bonkers? It is to me, that video is getting a lot of heat and it is the craziest thing to me because I think it's the oldest trick in the book to have your wife sitting there and he's like holding on to her. And like, then you he not looks at up. her about three minutes in and says, by the way, did you want to say something? It's crazy. But anyway, Wendy, to answer your question, yes, there have been women who have come forward. So a social media influencer by the name of Candace de Madero, she came uh -oh. forward and said that she had an affair with this relationship guru after he allegedly told her that he and his wife were separated. Mm -hmm. She says that they were texting through the summer of 2020, so very recently, and she says that they even slept together in the same bed that he shares with his wife. No! So, yeah, I know, uh. I know. And now also another mistress has come forward. We do not have her name, but this mistress claims that he has still been reaching out to her to this day, even when he's on video with his wife saying that they have worked out their own thing. And Wendy, there's some, some serious claims. She is claiming that she was pregnant uh -oh. with Derek's child last there year. She says that she knew he was married, but that he said that he was separated. And according to her, at the end of November or early December in that time frame, so again, recently, she found out she was pregnant and she did not want the child, but she insists that Derek said that he did not want her to terminate the pregnancy. Then after that is when she found out about the wife, and that's when Derek, again, claimed that they had been separated for at least a year or two, and obviously it appears to everyone who's watching that he was lying to all these women about the relationship status with his wife. So, is, any word from the wife? Is she gonna file for divorce right now? Now? No, not at all. 
So actually, if, if your viewers go to his Instagram and watch the rest of that video, it's about eight minutes long. He looks at her in one point and he says, oh, did you, have, did you want to say something? And then she speaks at length about how they have worked it out, that they are, you know, figuring it out on their own and that they only came forward now after they figured out their own things. And she actually, I have a quote from her from that video that I'm going to read to you now. Okay. She says, quote, today I am at peace and I proudly stand by his side. I have no hesitation, no hurt or shame about that. And it's only because of the grace of God and the mercy of God. And we have already turned a new chapter in this story. Elizabeth, I am done. Thank you so much for being here. This is Wag Mike for everybody. Trendy at Wendy is next. I love stuff. Um, it's time for Trendy at Wendy. Please welcome back to our show, Melissa Garcia. Thank you so much. So good to be back. Cute shirt. Thank you. Yeah. Macy's. Uh, why not? Um, tell us about the stuff. Yeah, so of course, Rula Law gives us all these amazing products. And today, everything is actually under $50. So great deals. Grab them while you can. And we're going to start over there by that ring light. So that's from LAX Gadgets, and it's their selfie ring light stand with tripod. <laughs> so, Wendy, we both know great lighting makes or breaks your picture, right? Yeah, but OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but honestly, it's good though. It is, it is. And we all have a social media presence at some capacity these days. Any Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it is, these, this light yeah. will just up your game. I used it this weekend. I actually have like three of these around my house. The before and after is really dramatic. Like you can really Wow, tell, it really yeah, is. You can really tell the difference. This one is great. It has three different colors you can choose from. It comes on this adjustable tripod. So if you're sitting, you can use it standing. It also has a battery power pack, so it charges. And at the price that you're gonna get it at, you should grab more than one. I use like two when I'm shooting at home. Your sex tapes will look fabulous. <laughs> Okay, uh, how much is this? Okay, so I'll just get to the price on that. Um, so retails for $49.99. We're getting 60% off, just $19.99. Oh, two. yeah. Mmm, that Jeez. is. So I love great sheets, especially in the spring, a great refresh. This is from Duck River. It's their three-piece reversible pin tuck and geometric duvet set. So this is great, super, super soft. You're getting either a king, queen or twin size. You get the duvet cover and you get two pillow shams. But the best part is it's fully reversible. So you're essentially getting two wow. for the price of one. So this is great. It comes in six different colorways that you can choose oh. from, as you see there. Mm. Retails for up to $160, but we're getting up to 75% off. So just $39.99. That's a great price for a duvet. Great. Yeah. Mmm, jewelry, jewelry under $50. Yeah. <laughs> so this is plated CZ hoops and bracelet set. This is so beautiful. It has a really modern, sort of sleek, industrial feel. Yeah. Has those large links. It has a carabiner style, um, really beautiful clasp. It is either in the rhodium you can choose or the 14 karat gold plated metal in either the heart or in the oval design. Really pretty, a great graduation gift. Yeah, yeah. and Mother's Day. Mother's they're Day. They're very lightweight, so if you have long, longer hole, they're not gonna, you know, break it for pull. you, you know? Yeah, that's a great, yep. So retails for $80, but 50% off, just $39.99 for the set. And some girls also have a, a thicker wrist. Yes. Yeah, so so this it. fits us all, whether it's a thin one or yeah. whether it's a thicker one, and I love the dangling. I love its yeah. angle, yes. Yeah. And you can layer this with other jewelry okay. too. Okay, this is great. So this is from Cortex Solo and it's their 450 degree one inch flat iron set. So if you use a flat iron for either straightening or you can actually use it to curl your hair too, this is great. So you're getting the flat iron which heats up in just 30 seconds. You're also getting this great heat protective mat, the two clips and heat protectant spray to pre protect your hair when you're using it and prevent frizz. This is really good for people on the run. A 30 yes. second heat up. So 30 you second heat up. To your job on time or whatever you do. And it comes in five different colors to choose from. Yeah. So retails for $200. Hair tools can be really expensive. Yeah. 82% off, just $34.99 for the entire set. Great deal. Why not? Mmm, so luxurious our, moisturizers. I know, one of our favorite skincare Thousands brands. Thousands of dollars. Thousands. <laughs> Here at, at Wendy, this is from Predary Paris, and it's their age-defying stem mm. cell complete regimen. So they put this set together just for Wendy watchers. This is amazing. So you're first getting this age-defying serum, 
which is great because it's jam-packed with retinol and apple and grape stem seed stem cells. Then you're getting this amazing age-defying face lifting cream, yeah. which is amazing because it actually says that it reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles in just 60 seconds, packed with argon oils. This is for a girl on the run. It is for a girl on the run. And then their signature 50X stem cell concentrate. This is incredible, super luxe product, super luxe ingredients, really high end, and we always know that because the retail price is $2,764.99. But we got you. But we got you, we got you. 98% off, $49.99 for the set. <laughs> Get all this stuff before they sell out. Thank you so much, Melissa Garcia. Thanks. Thank you to our friends at Rule Allah. Go to wendyshow.com and get them. Yeah. We Ask Wendy is next. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for Ask Wendy. Now, Heather is in Cleveland. Hi, Heather. How you doing? Hi, how you doing? Fine, thank you. How can I help you? Okay, so this is kind of juicy. I'm scrolling through my social media the other day. I'm, um, I see a, I see this girl's name who I know that slept with my ex-husband. Now we're now divorced. Okay. And I, I've never seen her face, but I've never like known, you know, I know her name because I've been like searching for her, like literally throughout <laughs> my marriage you know, and we got divorced. But now I see her, I'm like moving on. I'm trying to, but I wanted to say something. Like, should I say something to her or do, do I move on? It's just an extra layer of strength if you say something to her. I mean, you divorced him, which is great. Are they still together? No, they were, it was just a one night stand. Yeah, well, that'll learn her. And, you know, leave her alone. I figured. I'm like, you know, I moved on, but I was like, <laughs> You know, I saw that name and I got all angry. So I'm like, ooh, yeah. should I do it? That's what that does. That's why you can't look. You know? Yeah. By the way, who looks better, you or her? You oh, know, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stax is in Harlem. Hi, Stax. How can I help you? How you doing, Wendy? How you doing? Mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm divorced and um, a year into my new relationship. When I was married, everything was public, all on social media, like the whole world knew everything. But um, with my new relationship, I want to keep everything kind of private, you know, to myself. But that makes people think that I'm single. So how do I keep these guys out of my DMs? I'm not acknowledging them, but I also want to respect my man. So how do I keep them out of my DMs without having to announce to the world that I'm in a relationship? Well... Tell the world that you're in a relationship, but then don't post this picture, you know? And guys are pigs. They'll okay. still slide into your DM and stuff. And all you have to do, I think, because I don't have a DM, but don't you just delete, delete, delete? You don't have to read everything. It just keeps popping up. That's what he but said. I, I, I'll ignore. No, you know what, Stax, just, you know, honor your relationship with your new boyfriend. Congratulations on being together one year. Thank you. And the social media thing is such a dangerous thing for relationships, for workplace, for parents and the whole bit. So just focus, okay, on the new man. We'll be right back. <laughs> Michelle is from San Antonio. How you doing? How you doing, Wendy? Good, thanks. So I'm gonna show you a celebrity wearing a mask and you have to tell me who the celebrity is. You ready? Here's the photo. Yes. I didn't guess it, but he is so hot. Ooh, I'm embarrassed. I think it's uh, Nick, Nick yeah. Jonas? Yes! Oh. We're gonna send you a $100 gift card, okay? Cash gift card, we'll be right back. Candy of the day. We love fashion here, and Olivia is going to show us what she's got. She's in Texas. Take a look. Hey, Wendy. How you doing? Thank you for making me your eye candy of the day. I am Olivia Lemon Domain Squeeze, and when life gives you lemons, you have to make lemonade. I got this beautiful yellow top for only seventeen dollars. 
These nice blue jean pants, $15. And this cheetah print fedora hat, $5. This is a plus size fashionista look for the springtime and you better get into it. Thank you, Wendy, miss you, bye. Thank you, Olivia. I like your outfit. I like that pop of color on the bag, too. Olivia, we're gonna send you our special limited edition, how you doing? Light up mask and a $100 gift card for Love Scene eyelashes. We'll be right back. Another fun day with you. Don't forget about the after show in my office today. It's gonna be uh, my jeweler, Will the Jeweler, and he's going to explain to you about the obnoxious flower ring that I absolutely love. <laughs> he made it for me, it took forever. He's gonna explain. Anyway, I also wanna thank our guest and my co-host here, my studio audience, and my virtuals at home. Tomorrow on the show, the stars are buried by the Bernards. <laughs> Plus I got you with the hot topics. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. Nice.